Hey guys, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. This is kind of an impromptu uh, vid. Uh, I had a question from a Patreon partner, and as you know, that Patreon partners and donors get my undivided attention when I'm able to give it. And he had a question in regards to the AOB scan script that I sent him. He didn't understand what was going on, and that's not it. Let me get rid of this one. That, that one's no good. I think it was this one right here. Yeah, this one right here he had questions with, and this one here he had questions with. And both of those are dealing with the items in the game. He was having trouble locating items or getting a script to work with items. And so I sent him a couple of working scripts, and uh, he just didn't understand why they were working. So he asked me to if I could just explain it to him. So I thought about just making him just a bid for himself, but I decided to make it available for everybody. Since we have just talked about this in the last lesson, I thought it would be good to show you in an actual game instead of just a cheat engine tutorial. But you'll be able to see that we're doing the exact same things we did in the tutorial that they in this game here. This is NIOH, it's a 64 bit game, and I'm going to go over items right quick. And right now I'm at a location. Now this is still at the beginning of the game right here. And I got the sound turned almost all the way down on it. So you won't be able to hear it. So it don't bleed through my microphone. But every time you pray at this uh, altar right here, you'll get uh, three medicine. I've already found the health. And I did an injection copy. And for those that would like to understand injection copies, I'll link that bed tuck for you in the upper right hand corner. But basically what it does, it automatically finds our health address, or any address, that we tell it to via a script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my health down so we can use the medicine. And just freeze it at 100, that way we can use it over and over and over again. Now, for right now, I, I just want to show you, or let's just start at the very beginning. Just well, right now I'm leaving the scripts on here this time but for right now let's just pretend they're not there and let's just find it from scratch you're going to find medicine on a 4 byte and its exact value very easy value to find so let's go ahead and do that and this is a 64 bit game so scans could take a little bit longer than a 32 bit it's just got many many more addresses to search through and there we go. So let's go ahead and use medicine. And one to two. And just do unchanged. Read out a few of those. And let's use it again. Dump one. And we're only left with one address. And as you can see, if you take a look, this is a static address. It's green. What that means, static means it will not change. It will always be that address. When you hear the term dynamic address, which is what this is, they will change. Okay, but anytime you have a value and you find it at a green address, that value will always be at that address. Every time you bring up the game, it will always be stored at that address. So we can just test that and make sure that that is our medicine, which it is. You can see the same address up here. Let's move it back two, three, and, and take a look. We can, we can still use it again. So that is our medicine. And then what I did was I put the debugger on it. And I find out what's accessing it. So I can just see everything that's going on with it. And there we go. And we can see it's going through uh, several different things, but right here is what caught my interest. It, this is where a subtraction is occurring. If we can take a look at the registries, RBP, now that's a base pointer, so that's dealing with the stack. But uh, we can see that this base address is the base address of our particular item here, which is medicine. And the actual medicine value is being stored at the address 218 hex bytes away from it. Okay. And the R15 registry is carrying a value. And R15, R9, all this, uh, R8, all the way up to R15, uh, those are only 64 bit registries. I'll get into those later, but you'll only see those come into play in 64 bit software, 64 bit games. Okay. 
he was confused on what R15 registry was. It's just another, it's just another registry that is used for 64 bits. All right. But we can see here that in the R15 registry, we see the value of one is being carried in there. So basically, whatever is on the left-hand side is being affected by what's ever on the right-hand side. And we can see it's a subtraction. It wants to subtract that one from the value, which is right now at two. Okay. So if I go to drink another one, it's going to subtract one from it. Every time I use medicine, it's going to subtract one to it. You can see it's not constantly being monitored. It's only being affected when we actually use it. So that's the one I went to in memory. So let's go to it. We can close this down. First thing we want to do is make sure there are no other addresses going through it. So we bring that up. And we just go use our medicine again. And boom, that's the only one at the, at the moment. Now, I'm sure other items will be in there as well. But if you're wanting infinite items, that's a good thing. You don't really need to do any comparing out. Which also we'll be learning about in the very next Back to Basic Lessons on step number nine. That whole lesson is nothing but about comparing. And why you need to compare. But that'll be on the next lesson. That should be coming out by next week. Okay. I'll get into comparing later, but you're going to get a, a quick rundown of it in this vid here. So just stick with me. So let's bring up my first script. So I showed you how I got to this location. And I always start at the very basics, value scanning. And so the first thing I did was I wrote this script. That's the first thing I did. First thing I tried to do was to move a 99 into this address the bad part about this is if you move 99 into there just you know take out that value and replace it with a 99 it zeroes it out i have not had time to go back and look around and see why that's happening but anytime you move any value in there it voids it out it just totally erases it. it's no longer there you got to go pray at the doctor again for it to give you three more meds back so i try to look for ways around that and I found that adding and subtracting the value it will do what you want it to do so and that's what I did in this particular script and I'm going to go over this script in just one second first off I want to answer this script this one confused you this was a direct byte manipulation this is what I decided to go with just for a little while until I could sit back down with it again Basically, all this script is doing is doing the AOB scan. It's coming to this place in memory. Because there is no other pattern of bytes like that in this particular module. Only these bytes are in this particular order at that location. So it starts at that byte 66, which is located at this address. And all I did was see what byte I needed to change to turn that sub to an add like that if we take a look over here when I mash OK we can see the only byte that changed was that 29201 same thing we just did in the previous lesson on back to basics right direct byte manipulation so I don't really believe I need to go over all that again all you have to do is watch that bit. I go over it step by step about this direct byte manipulation. I just did that again. That's all that is. Direct byte manipulation that I just went over. So please go watch the vid. I'll hook it up in the right hand corner as well for you. And I go over it step by step. Nothing different. Nothing new. Nothing different. What really confused him was this script. He saw, well, I did a compare, I got this, I don't know what that's doing, I don't know what this is doing, well, why you got two different scripts? Well, this is for step number nine coming up. And uh, that's basically why, is we learn to compare out and things like that. And basically, I was just trying to find a workaround just to get it to cap out at a certain value and not keep counting up all the time when you add. If I just run this, this script that I just have where I just changed that sub to add it's just going to keep adding every time I use one and never stop it's just every time I use it it's going to add one every time I use it again add one and just keeps going it's just going to keep counting up so I tried to do it in a way where I could just cap it off at a value and 
you know, it won't go beyond a certain number and it'll just kind of hang there. But I, I really hadn't had time to screw around with it. I did this like in five minutes and I just didn't really have time to mess with it because I, you know, busy working. So, but basically this is what it's doing. Everything about the AOB scan module, I went over in the last lesson. You really need to go watch it and understand it. So I'm not going through that step by step again, but I will tell you what all this is doing, okay? Real quick, it runs the AOB scan. It comes to the first instruction in the script. I need to run an AOB scan. Okay, I need to find this pattern. Does a search, found the pattern, boom. It knows to come to this address. This is the same opcode as the other. Okay, I'm dealing with the same opcode. All right, so which is at this address. And you know an AOB scan, when you name it something, you have to register a symbol. It will name that very first byte, whatever that first byte is, that name. So you can use that name from now on instead of the address. It will understand that that represents the address, okay? And that's what I've done down here. Now what I want to do, and I should have done this in the vid, is I want to separate this, okay? These little hash marks, that's just like little void signs. But what I'm doing is I'm separating this part from this part because they are in the same script together, but they're not together. These are two separate locations in memory it's dealing with, okay? The first thing it does is do the AOB scan, so the first thing it's looking at is that address and what it needs to do with that address. So when it runs that AOB scan, that's the first thing it's going to do is see what it needs to do. It's going to go ahead and alloc new mem, so it allocs the new mem with that many bytes, and it says, okay, what do I need to do with this address? So that's the first thing it does after it performs these two things. It's come to this address, which will be right here at 66, this opcode. And we're telling it underneath that opcode, I need you to place a jump to that new mem that we call that new mem that we just allocated and I need you to jump to it because I got some different instructions I want you to run instead of this just sub instruction so it says okay so it says okay I need five bytes to jump to that allocated memory do I have enough one two three four five I do looks like I got some access bytes left over one two three so we knock those out. Cheat Engine did that for us. That means those bytes still exist. Don't get rid of them. And it's going to jump to allocated memory. Okay. Now we also see a return underneath that address. That return is hooked to this address. It's placed underneath it. We're telling it that return name is the address that is directly underneath this, all these bytes. Okay. So when it returns, it's looking at that six cents. That's underneath, okay? But we'll get to that in just a minute. So when I turn the script on, instead of having a sub here, it's going to jump, have a jump to allocated memory in three knobs to make up for all these bytes. And it's going to have our cheat or our coding over in allocated memory. And it's going to go to new men and the very first instruction, it says, okay, what you need me to do? says okay I see C and P which means compare all right what do you want me to compare well I see the address of your medicine RBP plus 218 I just didn't put the zeros in front of it you don't need to but RBP plus 218 when that is 63 so okay so I'm comparing 99 which is hex 99 let me show you that right quick you see 99 right here if I convert it to hex 63 so I just use 99's hex form instead of its decimal form. If medicines e is compared to 99, what you need me to do? Jump if it's greater than or equal to 99. If medicine is greater than or equal to 99, I need you to jump to this label of code. And that's what different labels. I had somebody ask me that. Why, why do we need all these labels? Well, labels especially like when you're in new mem or in allocated memory or anywhere labels usually there's something different that's going on and also we can see at a glance we know that something different is happening we're making something different happen and also we can direct the program to go to these different things that are happening 
and we use labels to do that just to make it easier for us to understand and make it easier to tell the computer where to go to or where we want the program to go to so that's what it does so right here if it's greater than or equal to 99 it's going to bypass this and it's just going to jump to this label here and run this instruction which right now we have as a subtract so it's just going to subtract like normal okay so as you can see when we go to the game if i turned it on we only got one in there now let me put it back to three Let's go back to it now. Put it back to three. If I if I drink it with that code on, it's not going to meet that condition because three is less than 99. So it's not greater than 99. So it's going to come down here and run this. What do I have it doing? I'm moving the hex 99 into the R15 registry, which is the carrier registry here, and it's moving that value or not moving but it's adding that value to the pre-existing value that's already in there what's well, already in there that's three right now so it's going to add 99 to it which is 102 so as i keep drinking it the next time it comes back through it's going to be 102 it's going to see that 99 it is greater than or equal to because it said 102 now and it's going to jump down here and subtract one it'd be 101 next time i drink it it'd be 100 Next time I drink it, it'd be 99. Next time I drink it, that is greater than or equal to. Next time I drink it, it's going to see that it's greater than or equal to. It's still going to jump. It's going to go down to 98. At 98, that's going to be less than 99. It's not going to meet it, and guess what it's going to do? It's going to add 99 more to that pre-existing value, which is going to make it go even higher. So to keep it from doing that, to make it count up, 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 and up, we need to get rid of this altogether. And if when it moves that or adds that 99 to the pre existing value, it'll just hang at that value each and every time because then after that, we're just having it return. So that's what I should have done is just void that out, which means put two slash marks in. It's the same thing as voiding it out. The computer will not see it, and I'll show you. Let's do that. All right. So right here's the script. I want you to see this, so when I turn it on, let me uh, label it, just so you know, uh, head test. All right, so turn that on, and here's our jump to allocated memory and our three knobs, so let's go to that allocated memory, and here's our script. It's comparing the 99 to our medicine address jump if not less which is the same thing as jump if greater than or equal to both mean the same thing so if it's not less than 99 I need you to jump down here and what is here it's just jump back which is to return or does it need to return to that address that's underneath all these bytes which is the very next stop code that's what it'll do what would happen if I'd have left that subtract in there Instead of voiding it out, then it would be there to subtract. Watch. Turn it back on. Let's go back to allocated memory. And now if it jumps, it's going to do that subtraction. Then it will go down to 98. As soon as it hits 98, it's going to add to 98 that 99. And then it'll just keep subtracting down, down, down each time to 98 again, and then add 99 back to it and just keep repeating. But we don't want it to do that, so I take that subtraction out where it just hangs at 102 or whatever value it hangs at. So let's just take that back out, and you'll no longer see that subtraction there. That voids it out, bring it back up, it allocated it in the same spot, and now you can see that subtraction is gone. Now, it won't always allocate it in the same spot. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Okay? So, you got to kind of watch that. But here we go. That's, that's what the script's doing. So, let's just see it work. Okay? So, right now, our health is low right here. And we're going to use our medicine. Boom. 102. If I drink it again, since I voided out that subtraction, it should just hang at 102. It's not going to take anything away because it's always meeting the condition of being greater than or equal to 99. Let's bring that back down here. 
What if I just put it on two all the time and just have two right to it all the time? That way they're kind of fighting with each other. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Let me get my health back down. All right. Let's put this back down to 100. And let's increase that. All right. So let's drink another one. Now it's at 101. Remember, it only adds to its pre-existing value. Since I only had uh, two in there, it added 99 to that too, which is 101. And now it's just going to hang at 101. Now if I have the other code on, which is the same op code, it's just doing a direct byte manipulation. Let's go back to it. I turn that on you can see when I turn it on it just changes that to an ad and it's just going to keep adding up each and every time I drink one I didn't want it to continue to do that that's annoying to me so I just want to have it go up be above 99 or, or at 99 and just have it hang which is infinite it's infinite health. it's infinite items and if I didn't have my health frozen at 100 you know it would eventually just go to full health and stay there so that's what the script is doing I hope that helped make sense to you plus you know I'm glad to be able to show you this in an actual game instead of just the cheat engine tutorial but you can see there is absolutely nothing different the only thing different here is I put a compare in because I'm limiting to what I how much I want it to keep adding how many times I want it to keep adding when it meets that condition it will no longer run that ad it'll just keep jumping down here to return so that's the reason for compares. I, I want it to do something different when that value is reached. Okay? So that's what a compare. And we're going to learn, learn that in the next lesson. And I've already got a step tutorial, step number nine. I already explained that I will put up in the upper right hand corner. And you can go watch it. It's all about compares. The next lesson I'm going to do is not going to really be much different than the one that one already is. I'm just going to do it again in 64 bit. So go take a look at it.